Hey guys, DJ Lifestyle here, back with another video. Listen to this. Not many people realise what's happening on, on, uh, uh, with our financial system. Mm -hmm. And um, I think people need to wake up to the fact that governments steal your money and they don't just do it <sighs> lightly. They just do it. But uh, you're right. When governments borrow money, that's not free. Um, they get it back in two ways, or they steal in two ways. One is that our children and grandchildren have to pay the interest on the debt sometime in the future. And the other is that it's inflationary. It makes the dollar lose value faster than it otherwise would, which comes out of the savings of individuals who trust the government. In other words, if you have a bank account or you've got some cash under the mattress or whatever, you know, in any kind of form that depends on the value of the dollar, you are basically harvested in order for the rich to get richer. And I don't think that's something people completely understand yet, but I think more people are coming to that conclusion, which is why populism is becoming a bigger political force around the world. In other words, Donald Trump can trace his political ascendancy back to this idea that uh, people are figuring out that the government is screwing us over. And anybody who promises to get back what's been stolen from us uh, has a good chance of getting our vote, you know? And, and so I, I think that might be the, um, the limiting factor in all of this, where the scams that governments are running are increasingly getting them voted out of office and replaced by people who actively um, campaign against those scams. So it's one good thing that's coming from this. You know, it's, it's not going to be a pleasant process, but at least it's heading in the right direction politically, if not financially, and seeing what they seem to think about it. And so far, you know, a lot of guys that I respect who are, um, you know, objectively a lot smarter than I am, um, seem to think that it's it's for real, that the law has actually been changed in a way that allows, uh, you know, what we used to think of as a bank bail-in, where they take your deposit in order to support a failing bank. Well, that is now spread uh, across the entire financial economy, where whatever you have in an account anywhere can just disappear because they're, they're going to transfer ownership of it to these big dominant entities out there in the financial system that need the, those assets in order to keep from blowing up. So, you know, that, the great taking is a pretty um, apt term for what they're talking about. And if it's true, then it, it extends a lot of people's fears from bank bail-ins to basically everything, you know, and then, you know, confiscation of this and, and the evaporation of that. And so, um, Two things about that. One is that it's a recipe for a civil war because it's basically going to be baby boomers who get um, stolen from in that kind of a scenario because we own most of the financial assets um, generationally. You know, it won't be the millennials um, who suffer very much from this because they don't have that many, for instance, stocks in brokerage accounts, but it's going to be the boomers. Uh, and we won't take this line down. <laughs> One thing I've noticed lately is that uh, most of my boomer friends are pretty well armed. It's just late in life, it seems to be that guys accumulate weapons. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I literally think we would have... Uh, we would have a civil war if they tried to do this, but that doesn't mean they won't do it because they've been softening us up with uh, the pandemic and, and you know a lot of the financial stuff that's been going on um, as a way of seeing what they can get away with. And they found out that a significant part of the population can be cowed into obedience if uh, if you tell them there's a crisis. So, you know, the government's pitch might be, look, um, it's absolute chaos and, um, you know, civil war and and uh, martial law, unless we're able to do these financial things that we need to do, and we'll make it all up to you. Don't you worry. We're going to take care of you. But for now, you don't have access to your brokerage accounts or something. Look, they are, as he says, thinking about, you know, um, taking your taking all your assets and these are uh, the people who have lots of money in their accounts uh, um, uh, baby boomers as they call them look people need to wake up to the the, the the shift that is taking place people are putting taking out their cash from banks and putting it into digital assets why are they putting it into digital assets because they don't want the governments to take their hard earned money a lot of people are also putting their money into gold and silver and other uh, things like buying uranium and um, other um, 
possible um, stocks that are going to hopefully um, give them a return as opposed to having their money stashed in the banks where it's only insured to up to $250,000 in the USA and that could even be stolen as well from what I'm listening, what I'm hearing here. They, he did mention that they have a, um, a link to the Great Taking book which people should go and read or you can go and look it up for yourself, the Great Taking for yourselves find out a lot more about what is literally happening. He spoke about how they have been softening people up. They have been softening people up. People have been like sheep going to the slaughter to, to have their banks cleaned out by these people. Come on now, wake up. The, 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 the financial landscape has changed massively. Um, you're able now to spend your cryptos if you have, um, whether it be a Coinbase card or whatever, uh, 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 and buy stuff literally with your cryptos wake up that's all i gotta say because like i don't get why people are not seeing no 99 percent of the people are not seeing literally what's taking place they're not understanding that you are going to be left behind if you don't do something about it anyway if you like this kind of content please like and subscribe um moving on and the fed printed a bunch of money during COVID and gave it to like BlackRock to manage. Like, was that incompetence? Especially when BlackRock like wrote a plan at the end of 2019 of the monetary policy that the Fed followed exactly when COVID happened about what the Fed would need to do during a unforeseen crisis. I mean, it's just like, was that incompetence or is that corruption? You know, and so, I mean, a lot of times they try and absolve themselves of like, when they sort of get caught or start to get caught for something corrupt, they'll be like, oh, don't look any further. We're just really stupid, you know? Um, but if you consider just like the massive amount of wealth transfer that's happened in the past 20 years to like the people at the very top, um, obviously, well, I, I think it's obvious, but I mean, that can't all have been because of incompetence, you know? And more and more has come out yeah. like with COVID too, like, um, you know, the safe and effective stuff about the vaccines. And we, I, I mean, a lot of people in alternative media knew it was experimental and that there wasn't enough testing and stuff and they were uh, censored. And then the stuff was forced on people through mandates and, and things like that. Like, was that incompetence? Um, you know, I mean, they knew then what a lot of people in alternative media knew then, they being, you know, the people in charge and they still put it through anyway. And now there's like, they're acting like it didn't happen, you know? Let's see, one of the earliest iterations of it, at least in the United States, uh, was during the Obama administration. They called it a driver's license for the internet. The idea of in order to access the internet, when you set up, you know, internet connection at your house, the internet service provider links all of your internet traffic to your ID. And in doing so, the government and the signals intelligence arm or intelligence agency of the government then has access uh, to not just everything you're posting and writing online, but also everything you read and consume online. And everything you buy. And everything you buy, to totally. I mean, uh, th this whole push is completely related to ending financial anonymity and financial privacy as well. It's a completely interrelated thing. Um, and I've done uh, pretty extensive deep dives on this uh, going back to probably like 2021 because it's very tied up with how they're likely to force this regulated internet on the populace. Because they're not just going to be like, let's do this now. I mean, people aren't going to go along with it. So they need some sort of um, event that gets people uh, angry and afraid and panicking in order to stick it through. So basically, uh, this is going to be folded into, I guess, what I would call a Cyber Patriot Act. The Patriot Act being the legislation pushed through in the US after September 11th, 2001. Right. Um, a lot of which wasn't necessarily related to anything to do with 9-11, but was a huge power grab by the state taking advantage opportunistically of the panic after 9-11. So they need some sort of event like that 
to ram all this stuff through. But the, the plans have been on the books for a very long time, and it's not just the U.S., it's really everywhere. I mean, um, I think in uh, the U.K. you have something called, like, the online safety bill. Uh, they'll say, oh, it's about protecting children. But really, it's about ending encryption, which law enforcement in the U.K. and the U.S. have been trying to do so hard for years and years and years. I mean, Bill Barr, uh, uh, who was attorney general under Trump in the U.S., was like, mm. that was his main policy goal was to end encryption and he talked about it all the time but a lot of people didn't really pay attention i guess but in the uk it's a similar push because of course as i'm sure you're aware um the uk national security state and the u.s national security state are very intertwined uh specifically signals intelligence the whole five eyes alliance which is obviously includes more countries but it's it's uk and u.s dominated she asserts that these institutions are set to control a significant portion of the uh, this is why I'm going to talk about the um, oh god the, the 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 ETFs. I mean that's a that's a grab right there. Um, and I, from what I understand as well, with the ETFs, there BlackRock is is buying up so much at the moment. And um, could that be a, a, a way to to collapse the Bitcoin and then rebuy back again at lower prices, but with control, etc. etc. I don't know. But I'm not going to um, dwell on that. Um, I think there are other technologies coming out there. People are pushing back. Um, you have the farmers in Germany, France, and all these other places um, pushing back on um, uh, government overreach. Um, there is people. There are people. Sorry, waking up um, to the the, the 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 scams that um, that have been taking place by government. Anyway, moving on. Here you're going to hear uh, the banks in much more worse shape, and this is from, I think it's Peter Schiff. Anyway. Well, this time the banks are in much worse shape because it's not the defaulting mortgages that are the problem. It's all the mortgages because it's not houses that went down in value. It's the mortgages that went down in value and the banks own them. So either your bank fails and, and you lose money. I mean, you lose deposits. You don't get 100 cents on the dollar. Or alternatively, the Federal Reserve comes to the rescue of the banks and, okay, you get your money, but it doesn't buy very much. So either you lose your deposits or your deposits lose their value. Those are your choices, but you're not going to walk away from this whole. Yeah. Okay, guys, if you like this kind of content, uh, like and subscribe, take care of yourself, have a great day.